Yo, what is good, Ram Team? I am RJ West, and I am back for part two of my MLB 2017 season predictions, where in this one we will be talking about the National League. Now, yesterday's video was quite eventful. I mean, I, if you consider baseball eventful or whatnot, I'm not sure, but today we are looking at the National League, and we're looking at a league in which I think is weaker than the American League. So basically, I consider the National League to be the East of the NBA. You know, compared to the NBA, I consider the National League to be the East and the American League to be the West. And so with that being said, no more talking. Let's just get right into these predictions. The Reds have pretty much fallen flat since their early 2010 success. This offseason, I don't think that they got any better as a franchise or that they got better in terms of getting prospects. Sure, they have some guys including Jesse Winker who will be coming this year, but in terms of talent, they don't have much of any around Joey Votto. They replaced Brandon Phillips with Jose Peraza, which isn't too bad, but they still haven't figured out that Billy Hamilton is a number 9 hitter and not a leadoff hitter. They could be a decent offensive team with Votto, Shebler, Duval, and Peraza, but the pitching won't be very good. The rotation only has one guy who has been experienced as a starter in the big leagues in Scott Feldman since Homer Bailey and Anthony DiScalfani are both currently injured. DiScalfani should be back but that still won't change too much and the bullpen pieces should be moved at the deadline to place this team at a 59-103 and record. I put them so low because unlike some teams ahead of them that are in rebuild mode, they have minimal young talent that could eventually propel them. season the Padres won 68 games and I don't think that they got better whatsoever. They have young talent that could propel them like Manuel Margot and Hunter Renfro combined with Will Myers and Yang Gabriel Solarte in the lineup that could produce wins but this team is more so defense oriented since Petco Park isn't really a hitter's ballpark. Ryan Shimp is a pure power hitter hitting in the sixth spot which is fine but after him there are pretty much defensive only players. The pitching staff didn't get much better either, even though Petco Park isn't a pitcher's park. Jared Weaver is not very good anymore, the same can be said about Yolis Chassin, and Trevor Cahill hasn't been a full-time starter in a couple of seasons. The bullpen has some good pieces in Brad Hand, Ryan Butcher, and Kevin Quackenbush, but overall this team isn't very good. This team at least has some young pieces, which is why I have them at 65 and 97, and ahead of the Reds in the standings. The direction is nice as long as they make the right moves moving forward. To be honest, Brewers fans, your team has had some disappointment since 2011 after what was believed to be your year. Now it's still time to continue the rebuild process. Offensively, this Brewers team is pretty good. Jonathan VR had a career year last season and will be a nice leadoff hitter. Ryan Braun is still a very capable feature bat at the three spots. Keon Broxton will grow as a number two hitter who gets on base as the season progresses. Eric Thames is fresh off of a big time season in the Korean League. Travis Shaw was acquired from the Red Sox who is projected to be a solid contact, good power hitter, and at the very least, everyone else will be solid gloves and decent power bats. I expect the young guys to progress as the season goes on, which is why I see them being better than the Padres and the Reds with the young talent they have in the lineup. The pitching is the one problem with this team, which is why I don't see 70 wins happening. Joba Chamberlain, Natali Police, and Tommy Malone were all picked up to help the bullpen, but I'm not entirely sure it gives help for the pitching staff. Junior Guerrero should have a higher ERA than 2.81 this season, but still be solid. With that being said, the rest of the rotation and bullpen is full of average pitchers and maybe a couple of above average bullpen pitchers. Zach Davies could be something as he's only 24, but the Brewers staff has not proven more than being average. Because of that, I have to hold them to 65 wins since I believe production wise this team is slightly worse offensively simply because not many guys are proven and because the pitching didn't improve at all since last season. Don't worry Brewers fans, your team will be back on top sometime soon if they make the right moves, which includes upgrading the pitching. To 
be honest, I'm unsure what the Diamondbacks are currently trying to do. They traded away Aaron Blair, Ender Inciarte, and Dansby Swanson to Shelby Miller. Yes, Shelby Miller was injured last season, but even after the All-Star break, he still didn't prove himself to be worthy of the price they paid to get him. Shelby can be a good number 3 or even number 2 starter, but they treated him like he's an ace, which he isn't. Zach Greinke is the same way, although his story gets better. To give some context, Zach Greinke spent his time with the Royals, Brewers, and Angels in which he won a Cy Young with the Royals, but he then decided to join the Dodgers where he became an awesome pitcher paired up with the number one starter and the best pitcher in baseball, Clayton Kershaw. The Diamondbacks then proceeded to fall for the oldest trick in the book, which is the number two as a number one starter effect, by him pitching behind Clayton Kershaw and having a better season than Clayton Kershaw statistically, and be viewed as a better pitcher than Clayton Kershaw, which we know is factually incorrect. So then the Diamondbacks decided to give him a six year, $206.5 million contract, which oh by the way, on average per year is more than Clayton Kershaw's contract, more than Steven Strasburg's contract, more than Mike Trout's contract, and even more than Miguel Cabrera's contract. So he has the highest average salary per year compared to everybody else in Major League Baseball where last year his ERA was above 4 and just wasn't a very good pitcher. They fell for the trick. But oh it gets better. They traded Gene Segura and top prospect Mitch Hanniger to the Mariners for Cattell Marte who wasn't very good last season and Taiwan Walker who could be something. But it has not been more than average to below average as a full time starter in the big leagues. The rest of their pitching staff includes Robbie Ray and Patrick Corbin. Patrick Corbin came off of Tommy John surgery a couple of years ago and hasn't been up to all-star levels since. In fact, he got even worse last season going from a 3.6 ERA to an ERA above 5. This leaves the best pitcher in the rotation as Robbie Ray who last season didn't show anything good until the final month of the season. To top it all off, the bullpen still isn't very good and the lineup has a strange batting order. They currently have AJ Pollock leading off, which is fine, but they have a power hitter in Jake Lamb batting second, who should be batting fourth or fifth in the lineup, and they have David Peralta batting fourth, who will platoon with Nick Ahmed. This current lineup structure will cost them a couple of runs that may also end up costing them a couple of games if they aren't careful. Oh, I almost forgot. They replaced Wellington Casillo at catcher with Chris Iannetta. With all of this, I have some good news and bad news, D-Mac fans. The good news is you won't lose more than 93 games this season. The bad news is that you will not win more than 69 games this season. The offense will keep this team from sucking, especially in Chase Field, but I ultimately think that this pitching staff will cost them. There are some people who might be high on the Phillies after they won 71 games last year and made some offseason acquisitions. With that being said, if you are on this hype train, you need to get off at the next stop and wait until next season. They made some nice acquisitions to a solid bullpen in Joaquin Benoit and Pat Neshek and also to the rotation in Clay Buckles. However, Aaron Nola and Vince Velasquez are going to need to continue to develop before I start predicting wins for this team. They also acquired Michael Saunders and Howie Kendricks to fix a couple of holes in the outfield, but having Odubel Herrera batting third is a rather curious decision to me. He's a good contact speed hitter that really should be batting second rather than third. I get that Citizens Bank favors power hitters more so than contact hitters, but that still shouldn't incentivize you to put a number two hitter at a number three. I expect Michael Franco, Cameron Rupp, and Tommy Joseph to all succeed power-wise this season since Citizens Bank favors power hitters and especially right-handed power hitters. With all this being said, they are still young and still need this year for developing and specifically, someone in that young lineup to emerge as a true number 3 hitter. They also need someone to step up as the ace in that pitching staff which is why I hold them to only a 2 win improvement up to 73 games this season. This team should be an exciting team since chicks dig the long ball. Last season, the Braves were a team that just didn't have enough pitching talent that could complement Julio Teheran properly. They have some solid MLB talent that could make up more than 75 wins, but
but I won't be optimistic that everybody will play like they did last year if they were good. Dansby Swanson will start the season off batting second behind Inciarte, which is fine. Freddie Freeman will look to once again have another awesome year. Matt Kemp should continue to hit well in a ballpark that favors right-handed hitters more than left-handers. And Brandon Phillips should at the very least be a solid contact hitter. With all of this being said, the pitching is the problem and will hold this underrated offense back. So like I said earlier, I have the Braves winning 75 games, but taking a nice step forward this season since they do have some decent prospects and they could be a nice team in the future. There is some hype around the Rockies and I'm jumping on this bandwagon that has the Rockies winning 80 games. This might possibly be the most underrated team in baseball offensively. You can say that Coors Field contributes to that all you want, but the fact of the matter is that this team was just insane offensively last season. Last season, the Rockies scored 845 runs, which was second in the MLB behind only the Red Sox. Just know that this team is talented in the lineup all around. Charlie Blackman provides contact, getting on base, and power at the top of the lineup. DJ LeMahieu provides contact, gap power, getting on base, and solid speed in the number two hole. And Nolan Arenado is an all-around stud as a player in the best offensive ballpark in Major League Baseball. I haven't even gone over Trevor Story, Carlos Gonzalez, or the injured players David Dahl and Ian Desmond. You can check those guys out yourself. But with all this being said, there is one problem. The pitching. They gave up the third most runs in the MLB last season behind only the Twins and Diamondbacks, and it didn't really get much better. The bullpen has the potential to be very good, but there are still some questions about the rotation. John Gray enters the season as their ace after a rookie season where he struggled. The rest of the rotation has guys that are no aces and guys that are going to be starting in their first season. Chad Bett is currently out with an injury, but is no ace in his own rights. A good bullpen doesn't mean much if your rotation isn't at least solid to have each starter go at least 6-7 to seven innings of only 2-3 to three runs given up while this great offense goes to work. Because of that, I have them going 79-83 and 83 this season. They are taking a slight step up and should be a very good team in the future as long as their young players and prospects develop. I know that with Jose Fernandez being gone, rest in power, that people don't believe in the Marlins. I know that with the rest of the pitching staff and team itself, it doesn't make sense to believe in them. However, I think that this team will sneak up on some people this year. The ladies yell for Yelich, and will be yelling for Yelich even more with the next awesome season he is going to have, and will also be batting third in the lineup now. Giancarlo Stanton, I know strikes out a lot, but he is a pure power hitter, and therefore is just going to hit home runs and have a high slugging percentage while having a low average. However, he is the king of crush and will provide an awesome power bat in the lineup in a park that isn't really known for being of good home run power. D. Gordon was suspended 80 games for PEDs last season, but one thing that he does have is pure speed. He at the very least will be a good bunter that gets on base with his speed and steals bases to get in scoring position. Justin Bohr, Martin Prado, and Marcel Lazuna provide good bats in the lineup that will do their job. As for the pitching staff, the bullpen will be very solid, however, the rotation will take a hit without Fernandez. With that being said, I think that the rotation will bounce back and be solid this year. They picked up some under the radar pitchers that could provide some good stability in the rotation. If Wei Yin Chen can go back to being what he was on the Orioles, that will be a huge plus for them. Edison Volquez was picked up and he should be at the very least a low fours ERA guy for them. Adam Conley is a solid starter in the big leagues that could help provide some wins as long as the offense goes to work and the same could be said about Dan Straley who had a good second half to the all-star break last season for the Reds. Lastly, Tom Kohler is a guy that will be an average number 5 starter for them. The bullpen as I said could be very good and supplement the rotation as long as the offense does what they are supposed to do in order to give the bullpen the lead in the later stages of the ball game and the starters go at least 6 innings of 2-3 to three run ball. This all amounts to 81 wins in my eyes. I think people are really sleeping on this Marlins team and that they are motivated to prove the doubters that they can be a good baseball team without Jose Fernandez. <laughs> 